right so very good day to everybody this is technological innovation and new media and this and in this class we discuss about graphic standards display systems and then image information uh, so this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at dr.kristranand@gmail.com so before beginning the session once again let me thank god for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants students and young researchers right so in this class we discuss about graphic software then some examples the various components the various types that are associated what are the applications that we will discuss and then we discuss about r uh, yes displays okay nothing but raster scan displays and raster scan systems then we discuss, uh, discuss about raster scan display processor and then random scan display okay so i already given the enumerated work for you please complete them at your best available time and at regular intervals i'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics right so of course everybody knows about graphic software it's actually a computer program you can use to create or you can also maybe used to edit the images so there are several graphic software that is being available maybe from simple programs like maybe creating editing basic images maybe if, uh, even you can use the graphic software for 3d uh, tools like 3d models 3d animations also you can go for okay some examples would be like uh, adobe photoshop corel painter autodesk maya so that there we have like several applications so you can summarize that a graphic software program it's nothing but a computer application which you can use it to create the digital images so here graphics uh, software programs can be used to create both the vector images as well as raster images okay so the common features we will have like creating editing and maybe saving images in different formats like jpeg jpg bmp and so on okay so graphic software generally you can use it to create animations or maybe 3d models uh, like as i told you gimp inkscape are pretty examples okay so uh, you can uh, go for creating editing digital images illustrations you can create a brand logo okay for your business and you can manipulate the photos as well graphics as well you can go for and these are the graphic tools we have photoshop of course everybody knows about photoshop it's a graphic software used by the photographers and graphic designers as well and then you have adobe illustrator so that's uh, another popular graphic software that is being used by the graphic designers so maybe for creating vector illustrations you can use adobe illustrator then you can use corel uh, draw that's a, a software for professionals uh, then gimp you have gnu uh, image manipulation program it's of course open source free platform okay similar to photoshop and then you'll have uh, inkscape so that's a free as well as open source vector graphic software used by the graphic designers as well as illustrators so the components you can use to create as well as manipulate your graphic images so here you can use image editors uh, like uh, maybe uh, photoshop illustrator and you can also use like uh, vector graphics editors also so maybe you can use corel draw and then inkscape also and then with the case of 3d modeling software okay so in the three dimensions you can use maya 3d max and then cinema 4d so that's what you have with the modeling software and then with the case of animation software we can use adobe after effects apple motion and then autodesk maya so that we'll have several applications video editing of course uh, uh, filmora is one such uh, thing you can use it okay and uh, adobe premiere pro apple final cut pro and then avid media composer you can try okay uh, you can go with the editing the videos right so um generally with the case of graphics software you can actually make up several lines you can make shapes that can be scaled up you can um, make it small you can make it large you can fit according to the width even without uh, compromising on the quality okay so that's what you can go with the logos illustrations and diagrams and you can also use raster graphic software also so that is nothing but an image about pixels which cannot be scaled okay without losing quality so if you are going to say scale means then definitely quality will be disrupted okay so raster graphics then definitely you can use it for photos or maybe web graphics also 
So 3D graphics software you can use it in the images as well as animations for product visualization or maybe gaming you can use the 3D graphics software. So animation software we have uh, we can apply in the moving images either you can animate it okay and you can use it in the movies commercials and of course video games so the applications you can uh, apply them in graphics design photography video editing as well as web design also and you can use it to create as well as edit logos you can use other graphic elements you can create website layouts and design elements as well so this is how you are going to create illustrations visual presentations and of course digital alert also for example one one photo is there you can you can use it to enhance the photos images you can enhance the animation also which was already created so website designs also you can create and edit it even presentation slides also marketing advertisement materials also you can enhance it so the advantage is you can use it to uh, create high quality images you can edit images you can create custom graphics so this is how you are going to use with a case of wide range of tools for creating editing as well as manipulating the images okay so normally in the brochure or maybe uh, uh, a web layout okay so you can go with the designing advertisement as well as printing as well so even the complex images can be done with much more ease with these softwares and the greatest advantage is that whatever you are trying trying to create this design you can share it okay across the social media platform across the vector or maybe bitmap images so both creative means or maybe professional means you can use them and definitely you can use it in conjunction with the software programs like maybe word processors or maybe spreadsheets even where you can use it in documentations and presentations but disadvantages sometimes what happens these graphic software programs are actually expensive which means that the cost can be a barrier because the most of them are not available as open source okay and uh, definitely memory is also there even uh, with the video editing also it consumes lot of memory and uh, it can actually um, you know junk the entire uh, uh, the, the drive you are using with okay and definitely you, are, you cannot use a lower end computer you should use a higher end computer as well to work with the project smoothly and definitely it can be time consuming to create graphics as well and sometimes you have to purchase the software which means you have to go for paid subscription okay and it is very difficult to learn how to use the software especially if you are not used to or maybe familiar with the graphic design so most of them uh, like uh, for example open source is available has only limited functionality then after paid version also still we have to pay more and more and definitely it will be frustrating for the users who can work more with the images or maybe animations so these are the raster scan displays okay so that's uh, a graphic monitor where you can employ a uh, cathode ray tube so it is based on the television technology where in the raster scan system the electron beam is going to swipe across the screen okay across the horizontal lines okay so from the top to the bottom for uh, covering one row at a time you will have the raster scan displays so here uh, uh, illumination uh, of patterns of uh, spots is being created by turning this beam intensity on and off so this is how the raster is going to scan across each row and here we will be having a memory area called as the refresh uh, buffer or maybe frame buffer that will be storing the HD definition okay so it will be holding the intensity values for all the screen points and here it can be restored from the frame buffer okay so every screen point you can call it as the pixels okay so horizontal retrace as i told you across the rows like uh, we'll try to refresh every 60 or maybe 80 frames per second and the refresh rates it's nothing but uh, units of cycles per second or maybe units of cycles per hertz okay every frequency so maybe if you try to return the left of the screen after refreshing okay so that you call it to be the horizontal retrace of the electron beam and then at the end of each frame electron beam it is going to return to the top left corner okay and it is going to begin the next frame okay so this is the horizontal retrace uh, and then this is the vertical retrace this is vertical and this is horizontal retrace okay and then you will have the display processor as well where you can digitize a picture okay so uh, according to the pixel intensity it will be storing in the refresh bu uh, buffer okay so this one you can go with the scan conversion okay 
So display processors, you can actually relate this CPU from the graphic jobs and definitely you can create much more different line styles, different uh, color areas as well, uh, where you can also use like mouse or maybe joystick to operate the raster scan display processor. So from the system bus, okay, uh, through the communication with the input and output devices, we are going into the CPU, system memory, video controller and across the monitor. The advantage is definitely real time or maybe real life images for the different shades can be displayed and color range is also bigger. Okay. But disadvantage is resolution is lower okay, and more memory is actually required and the data about the intensities of all the pixel has to be stored here. So here with the case of random scan display, electron beam is directed only in the areas where the picture has to be drawn, other areas no. Okay. So it is also called as the vector display and uh, definitely you can draw as well as refresh the component lines of the picture in any specified sequence. Then we have a pen plotter, so that is a random scan display. So here the number of lines it is going to regulate the refresh rate on the random scan display. And then we will have the area of memory called as the refresh display files. So here it will be storing the picture definition as a set of line drawing commands. And then here you will try to actually go with a faster refreshing as well like uh, the system it's once again is going to return to the first line command okay and after all the drawing commands has been processed so maybe like 100,000 short lines are there then it will be refreshing at a refresh rate and faster refreshing can actually burn the first one so maybe to avoid this every refresh cycle maybe it is delayed by 60 or maybe 80 frames per second okay so suppose if we have to display a square like a b c d okay the, the commands would be like draw a line from a to b okay and then draw a line from b to c then c to d so this is how it goes and then d to a so you can go with this fashion and uh, uh, generally you can use random scan display process where you can store it in the system memory along with the graphics package so graphics package it is going to translate okay the graphic commands in the application program into the display file which is uh, stored in the uh, system memory okay so maybe you can access it with the help of the display uh, processor to actually refresh the screen and maybe the display processor you can refer it as the display processing unit or maybe the graphic control so the advantage is definitely it has higher resolution and it is going to produce smooth uh, line drawing Le very less memory is actually required and disadvantages realistic images with different shades cannot be uh, drawn and we have some limitations in color.